Okay. Anyway, part <coughs> part three, and I'm done because this is just a lot of shit. You know, so you know the witch says, "I'm gonna take your voice. Good luck." You know, and she's like, "Okay." She signs the contract, and she actually in the movie actually signs a little little freaking contract. You know, and of course, you know the witch is very convincing, and you know that's why she signs it. Now in this movie, she's only like what 16 years old. She's just a kid. She's just a baby. You know, very easily swayed. Thinks that you know this this prince is the one. Has to be the one. Has to be the one. First time she falls in love, I guess. Um, and uh, you know she, uh, you know <coughs> she she starts morphing into a human, and of course her her two friends, you know the flounder and uh, the crab, Sebastian and uh, flounder. <laughs> Not very original. I guess they couldn't really come up with a proper name for a fish that was like you know extremely bloated yellow and had blue stripes. But you know, there's weirder things in nature like the platypus. Um. So okay. So flounder and Sebastian, you know, help pull her up to the surface. This this <coughs> this fish, that's like you know one sixteenth the size of this of this sixteen year old girl, and this little itty bitty crab that's about that freaking big somehow is able to pull her up to the surface. Now wow, that's that's good Disney. That's good to give me another one. That that one's nice. You know, thanks, Walt. You know, but um, you know, when you're young and you're watching that, and you're like, oh, oh, good, she made it to the surface. She can breathe because she she sprouts. You know, she sprouts lungs. Her gills disappear wherever the hell they are. Maybe they're in her tits. I don't know. Um, or maybe she can breathe through her nipples. I don't fucking know. Okay. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. I really don't give a fuck because that just looks creepy. Anyway. Um, you know, and, um, you know, so she ends up washed up on shore. Well, the dog that's owned by the prince recognizes her smell and starts going ape shit. You know, of course, I missed the part where, you know, she, you know, <coughs> eavesdropped on the party, the birthday party of the prince. <coughs> that's where she made someone was like, oh, he's so beautiful. Anyway. <coughs> well, she, you know, her, her friend, the... What was that freaking? What was that bird's name? Do you remember? Squawky fucking bird. I think it was a pelican. Because pelicans are obnoxious. If you've ever met a pelican, they're obnoxious. And, you know, Disney knows this all <coughs> too damn well because this pelican and the freaking, uh, uh, seagull. I'm sorry. Seagulls are obnoxious too. So are pelicans. But seagulls, they're obnoxious. I encounter seagulls all the time in the parking lot of the grocery store. Because it's not that far from the lake. They're scavengers. They're nasty. They're weird. Okay? I mean, you know, the powers that be created them for something. And I guess they're just the garbage, garbage pickers of the fucking uh, food chain. I don't know. Anyway. So, you know, the seagull's all like, oh, hey, you know, what's up? There's something different about you. I can't figure it out because he's a dumbass. You know, he's actually perched <coughs> on top of one of Ariel's legs. And he's all like, I can't quite put my finger on it. <coughs> Hello, you dumb shit. You know, Sebastian, you know, in his own way, he's just like, Jesus, man. Come on. She's got legs. Look at her. She's on human leg. Human legs. What are we going to do? What are we going to tell her father? You know, she freaks out. Oh, no, don't tell my daddy. My daddy would be so mad. Oh, no, oh, no. So they're like, all right, fine, we'll help you. So he goes like, well, you know, you can't just walk around naked. You know, that ain't gonna do. You're 16. You know, uh, you know, the, you know, little, uh, the, the guards of the castle, you know, they're, 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 they're freaks and they're gonna, you know, want to pinch your ass for whatever reason, you know. So somehow she go finds, you know, a piece of the sail because they're, the, the, the wedding, the, the wedding, or not the wedding, the birthday, the birthday uh, ship or whatever got caught in a storm or whatever, and Seagull's able to fish something out of the water, miraculously. There's no concept of time in any of Disney movies either, if you ever noticed that. Everything happens instantaneously. Um, 
you know, so she, she wraps up in this thing, looks like total shit. Dog discovers her, and uh, the dog uh, brings the prince to her and stuff like that, and he's like, you look familiar, do I know you? And she tries to say, you know, yes, you know, I was, you know, I was the one that saved you, and, you know, la, 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 does that sound familiar, honey? Ooh. But she can't, her voice is gone. The bitch, I mean, the witch took it, you know. So, for the whole three days, she's trying everything she can. She's trying, you know, being flirtatious, being coy, being cute. She's trying to be very attentive, listening to every <coughs> word that falls out of his beautiful mouth. Everything. She tries everything, everything, everything. And for whatever reason, because he's a gentleman, he doesn't kiss on the first date. And Oh, the second date? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I really like you. There is something about you, but I don't know. I don't know. And obviously the witch knew that this would be a challenge. But, you know, the witch kind of, you know, uh, didn't really uh, realize that Ariel was actually a very smart, smart little cookie. Realized, oh shit, you know, it's getting close to the third day, and um, she's getting pretty close to uh, getting a kiss. Well, looks like I'm going to have to morph my ass into a human. So she morphs herself into a human, shows up on land with Ariel's voice in a locket, you know, and has it, you know, pulsate saying whatever, and she snags the prince for herself in order to get Ariel to lose the bet. But, you know, she loses. She, you know, the witch dies. Sorry, didn't mean to spoil it for you. Anybody who hates spoilers. You know, and this is just to speed it up real fast. You know, they live happily ever after. And then you watch the sequel and you're like, oh dear God. You know, it's, it's, the sequel's kind of cute, but it's like, dear God, what the hell? You know. And I am touching that one because my daughter loves that one. Which distresses me, but, you know... I grew up on Disney, okay? That's all I freaking watched, okay? Uh, my most favorite uh, Disney-type movie isn't Disney at all. Uh, it's Spring Gully, The Last Rain Rainforest. And I can see why Disney didn't advocate it, because it has a lot of subliminal messages about uh, uh, anti-establishmentarianism. And, um, wow, it's just unbelievable. I'm starting to get dizzy now. But, um, unbelievable. Anyway, so, um, Disney will use those movies to warp your mind, to distract you. And they target it at children. Now, back in the early time, back, you know, you know when Disney was just starting out, uh, Disney was used in propaganda. And I hate that word, but there you go. Um... D Disney was very pro-Nazi, very pro-communist, very pro-fascist, Marxist, you know, uh, anything that was anti-democracy and anti, um, uh, you know, free-thinking society type, type shit, you know, they were, they were against all that, so, um, you know, there's, uh, <laughs> we even have a Disney movie, and I'm not showing it to the kids, I refuse. It's called Song of the South. If you've never heard of it, look it up. <coughs> that is the most... Ir I haven't watched it yet, because I, I'm a little hesitant, because anything that's racist in nature just pisses me off immediately. But it is extremely racist. Oh my god. And Disney made it. Um, and a lot of cartoons in the, in the early beginning stages were very... Um, adult in nature. They were geared towards adults. And then somehow, somewhere down the line, the tide changed, and now they gear it towards the uh, children. <sighs> really? I have to get them, don't I? That's pretty much it. I can't talk about Disney around the children. And I gotta see what's going on. Oh, you're gonna do it? And there's a lot more to it, but I'm still researching it, and I'm kind of taking my time researching it because it freaks me the hell out. But Disney is, um, 
Disney's responsible for a lot of the mind control. That's all I'm going to say. For now, anyway, until I get more research under my belt. So, there you go.